So hello and welcome. This is the going to be the first part of hopefully many many tutorials. Um, these tutorials are going to be centered around helping you get started with the game, get the better general grasp of the game, to understand some basic rooting, and it's going to help help you uh, propel yourself towards uh, getting you on track. Basically, getting towards that world record. It's the very first baby step. That's what this is going to be. That very first baby step towards getting those really high end records, knock out some of these high end guys. Now what this is not a tutorial about is, it's not about taking the most aggressive, most dangerous strategy. It's not at all about that. Uh, not one bit. Uh, so this is generally going to be like a first step style tutorial. Alright? Um, so that's what this is going to be about. So, what we're going to cover in this initial, uh, uh, this initial video is that we're going to cover just the basic layout, what you're seeing. And just some basic technical stuff uh, about lilac this is after all a lilac tutorial uh, i will not cover mila or carol this they're not one of my characters i really run uh, so hopefully someone else will pick up the slack and give us some videos on them um so let's get started with the ui here uh, at the bottom left you're going to notice that i have a input mapper input viewer my bad uh <clears throat> indicator and this is going to be there to help you understand what i'm pushing so you can kind of get understand like hey that's how it's gonna work, just like that. Uh, so you can tell I have the four cardinal directions. We have pause, attacking, anytime I attack, jumping, anytime I jump, or hold down the jump button, and then special every time we do lilac dragon boost. So let's explain some of these. Uh, how lilac can move? Well, she can move going right, left, she can look up, and crouch. Simple as that. Uh, <clears throat> she also can attack. Her attacks consist of this, which is a standard attack, does the maximum amount of possible damage. She can do it on the air, ground. If you combine with the jump, you can attack in the air. Uh, this attack can also be used to cancel uh, certain movement. I'll explain that later, which is going to be very useful for momentum and base stuff. She can crouch down and do a down kick. This is one of her weakest possible attacks in the game. Uh, this is generally not used for very much, so. This is like, unless you're like, you know, want to show off something. That's the only time you'll ever see this. Uh, she can also do an uppercut by holding up and then attacking. This is not necessarily a very good attack. It's not very efficient, but it's very good for moving around uh, the stage. Uh, that's where it's going to be ideal. It's also used for some movement tech as well. Uh, so that's all of the possible attacks she can really do. She does have one more style of attack, and that devolves from doing the jump. By hitting the jump button twice, she can do a cyclone. This is actually both a jumping movement tech and an attack tech at the same time, which is, makes this pretty unique to her. So the cyclone is very weak. It does one tick of damage. Damage in this game is, you know, <clears throat> it's tracked by ticks. Uh, the this will do like one tick. I think this is one tick per frame it hits. This is also one tick per frame as it lands. And this is going to be, I believe, three ticks if all if it manages to stay <clears throat> the entire time on its target. So the Cyclone is not really going to be used for attacking. We, we don't ever use this in very, very limited scenarios. We will actually use it for attacking, but it's primarily going to be used for movement. Uh, so a neat property about the Cyclone is... Well, first of all, if I decide to move, the Cyclone, or jumping in general, uh, is actually going to just slow down Lilac. And Cyclone carries that mechanic of jumping of that, hey, it's going to slow you down, to a standstill. So you lose all of your momentum when you Cyclone. With the exception of... the Also, uh, something about the Cyclone, why I'm saying with the exception of is, if you hold on up, she will actually try to maintain more height in the Cyclone. If you hold down, she'll try to drop that height. <laughs> So because of that, if you notice though, when you drop the high all the way to the ground, she's still spinning. The cyclone does not cancel while on the ground, because if you move and hold down and attack, she can also cyclone on the ground. So again, you can see a lot of utility for movements um, about that. Uh, so cycloning, you can only cyclone once, and I did say there was an exception. Cyclones kill momentum with the exception of holding down. But that has to do with how jumping works. As you jump up, you begin to lose momentum. The smaller your jump, <clears throat> the less momentum technically lost. There was one more attack I forgot to mention. 
it really has to do more with movement than attacking is while I can do a down kick, which you can't really see fully here because I'm jumping so low, but a, uh, a down kick, or I like to call it the drop kick, maximizes Lightleg's downward movement to her maximum possible speed. Uh, which is a good thing, and, and you're going to see this again, like anytime you're going basically jumping towards down or instead rising, she'll basically gain speed or maintain her current momentum, and that's why the cyclone going down is kind of important. So you can actually mix and match this, so if you cyclone down and then hold up, she'll actually maintain her previous momentum because it thinks that you're going down even though you're rising. That's something to keep in mind, but that's just general movement mechanics, you're gonna, <clears throat> which we'll talk about more very shortly. So that covers most of her general stuff, but then we got the special. The special represents the Dragon Boost. Dragon Boost will cause Lilac to move at her maximum possible speed, just like you saw. You can do it from a, if you do it from a standstill. You hold right, she can go right. Uh, <clears throat> do a standstill, hold the corner, you can go up. Uh, if you jump and then Dragon Boost, she'll hold in midair and then boost in any direction you like. In this case. Any cardinal direction except down, uh, any corner except down and up. <coughs> Alright, sorry about that. Uh, you can also do a rolling boost. You can roll and then boost. You can boost in corners or going straight. If you actually do a rolling boost and reach an edge, like say here, she'll actually lock in and then you can go in any direction you like. That's another unique feature and we're going to actually utilize that kind of movement tech again. Um, if you hold on the jump button while boosting, she'll stay, uh, she'll kind of, it's hard to explain, she'll stay in the air a little bit longer. It just makes the boost a little bit longer. I tend to call this a long boost. She'll stay in just a little bit longer. She carries her momentum just a little better. There's not every instance where we want to do a long boost like that, um, but there will be some instances where we would like to do that. Um, another thing about boosting is bonking. When you hit a non-curved surface, sorry guy, <laughs> like such as here, we do, we do a boost, curve, she'll bonk off of it. If you do a roll, any movement based boost, let's say I'm rolling boost or I'm boosting at an angle or something like that, off a wall, that's gonna happen. She'll just kind of bonk in angles. Um, so that's something to worry about when you boost at a, you boost in a diagonal towards anything. And we're going to actually utilize that uh, to a degree. Now, if you boost diagonally down, she will actually go into a straight boost. She bonks off it and goes down to the ground. She doesn't actually bonk off the ground like you normally think she would. And she doesn't do that period. She'll actually follow the contour of the ground. So again, we can use that for some mechanics of movements. Basically, the Dragon Boost is just designed to get us... It's mostly used as mobility. We don't really... Even though the Dragon Boost can do damage while it's active, it does do damage, uh, but we don't use it for the damage, we use it primarily to move around the map. Uh, it's going to be its biggest instance, either that or to completely recover Lilac's speed when she's going from a standstill or a very low momentum. Um, so what else? So let's understand a little bit about this game in general, or as I like to call it, freedom physics. Um, freedom physics is similar to sonic physics um for example if you jump down off a slope you will build momentum as you could saw lilac went really fast okay if you jump uh, up a slope she'll actually gain height simple as that simple as that it's just basic sonic physics you're gonna see this all the time now we can actually utilize this for a number of things it's actually multiplicative so if we hit to the very possible bottom my bad i didn't mean to do that if we hit the very lowest possible slope she'll move at the fastest possible speed hit the highest possible of the slope jump the highest possible speed something about cyclones in general when it comes to slopes and springs is that lilac tends to multiply that effect with great effect so Remember the down cyclone, it's any direction, hold down, <clears throat> and attack, right? When it comes in relation to slopes, oops, my bad, it will multiply it. So as you can tell, Lilac's aerial time is just multiplied. But if you do it downwards, it doesn't really do much since he's going down. So you can use this as a movement uh, tech that you will actually see very often. Uh, <clears throat> 
Also, when you jump in, sorry, when you down kick into his slopes, it does carry that momentum. So if I do a down kick here, Lilac's moving at practically maximum speed. She carries over her previous momentum. But if you down kick into a flat surface, it just goes straight to zero, which is something we generally try to avoid. So we're going to see ourselves kind of <clears throat> get into these slope jumps and maximize speed for Lilac. Um, some advanced tech. So this is the fun stuff. Uh, you won't see this stuff too often, but you will see it. So one of these advanced techs that we're going to see, it's called a high uppercut. Uh, so the high, oh, let's we'll start the easy one. We're going to avoid the high uppercut just for a second. And we're going to talk about, let's see if I can find a uh, good little surface here that do this on. Uh, there should be some curved surface, uh, a straight, straight surface here somewhere. Ah, here we go, right here. So this first uh, technique is just nicknamed brain damage. And it's exactly what it is. Anytime I like box against a surface at a, complete um <clears throat> on a horizontal plane meaning that she's not going diagonally which means she's not going to bonk at a diagonal back or anything like that we try to avoid that at any point she's not doing that um and you just kind of bonk straight she'll cancel her bonk and she will basically say hey you can do anything else uh, so when you're in the air you can bonk as many times as you like but when it comes to cyclones, you can only ever cyclone once in the air. Uh, for another advanced tactic, I'll explain how to multi you know, use multiple cyclones here. But I'll show you the bonking. So if she jumps up and you hold down boost and hold down jump, you can kind of bonk infinitely to climb any wall in the game. This is not used often, but we do use this in some instances to get higher up. It can also be used as a backup strategy. So it's a very good backup strategy, and it causes a lot like a lot of brain damage, as you can imagine. All right, so I was talking about you can only cyclone once. So if I was to, I don't know, cyclone cancel. Anytime you attack in the air, you cancel a cyclone. So if you notice, I'm trying to hit the cyclone button, but nothing's happening. You can only cyclone once in the air, even if you bonk off of a surface. You can only cyclone once in the air. Uh, so if I cyclone cancel bonk. And the cyclone, nothing's gonna come out of it. But if she gets hit, it resets her cyclone counter. Unfortunately, I don't have an enemy to shoot me, but if I got shot, I would be able to cyclone immediately again. You can also cyclone twice. And to get that to happen, you would have to do a ground cyclone, jump up, cancel, cyclone. You can cyclone multiple times by doing this, and we will utilize this to maintain that cyclone advantage that we don't always get to do all the time. So that's going to help a lot to just keep that, being able to keep cyclones can be very useful and you're going to see soon. Uh, the cool thing about that canceling and stuff is that uh, with the cancels and the high cyclones, how they operate, I want to introduce the down kicking again. So the cool thing about down kicking is that when Lilac performs the down kick, yeah, she goes completely fast down, but that has more applications than that. Uh, because when she down kicks, she actually maintains her current height of the down kick for like a split second. If you can combo this multiple times, you can actually maintain Lilac's height without dropping, basically. And it's very useful to maintain both momentum and height. So something like that would look like, I don't know, let's say you jump up, down kick, like that. You can maintain her height as much as you can while maintaining momentum. It's gonna be something you'll find very useful to just stay in the air a little bit longer to hit certain platforms. So that's something we are also going to look into. Uh, so that covers that. Now we can get to the cool stuff. I said high uppercuts. What's a high uppercut? So anytime you jump, that's jumping. Anytime you uppercut, that's another thing. So a high uppercut is we're going to combine this with this within a few frames. So to do that, and this will basically allow you to jump twice. So to do that, we're going to hold up as if we were doing a uh, an uppercut because then we have to hold up and attack to do an uppercut and to jump you should say jump so what happens is within a few frames of each other if we hit both the buttons at the same time she'll do a high uppercut as you saw it combined both the height <coughs> of the uppercut and the jump it allows you to jump practically twice as high see it's literally twice as high. This is extremely useful to getting the higher places without spending energy. Now, there is a few frames of doing it, so if you notice, sometimes when I do this, it doesn't go through. So 
it is within a couple of frames, but it's pretty lenient and it's not difficult. Uh, I do use a controller, so some of these tricks may be a little bit easier on a controller versus a keyboard. Others easier on a keyboard than a controller. So that's a high uppercut. Another tech that we will be using extremely limited fashion for this tutorials, but I will bring it up multiple times, it's called a high cyclone. High cyclones are absolutely necessary for maximum optimum time. They are very difficult to do, however, and they're very unforgiving. So a high cyclone uses that same concept as a high uppercut. Within a few frames, you're going to jump and cyclone. Same concept. But the high cyclone itself requires a very precise window. You have three frames to perform this trick. So it's not an easy trick. It's very difficult to get, even for the best players, to get reliably. So if you see this and you're trying to and you're getting very frustrated, don't worry. Not even the best players can get like a 70% success rate on this sometimes. So it's okay. We don't, now, we won't be using this for core concepts for uh, rooting, but we will use it as an alternative for slightly faster times. So here's how it is in action. First, Lilac just jumps, and then we're going to pause almost immediately, and then within three frames of unpausing the game, we're going to have Lilac jump again as if we're doing a cyclone, and it's going to stack the jump and the cyclone together. Now, this might take me a couple of tries, so even I'm not perfect with it, but you're, you're gonna, you should be able to see it hopefully within three tries. So here we go. So she's going to jump, pause, and then unpause, jump. So if you notice she did a really low cyclone, that means you were very close, but you're probably a frame or two off. So that was close, but we didn't get it. So I'm going to try again. There we go. Second attempt, we got it. See, so she solved the high cyclone. She jumps like a rocket. It's as if you jumped and did a cyclone, but even higher. Uh, this trick, as you can tell, is not easy. And even if you look at what's happening on the control input, it's almost instantaneous how the buttons are going to be hit. So I'm getting pretty lucky with all these high cyclones, but sometimes that's going to happen and whatnot. So getting a very high success rate on this is not required for this tutorial as it's very difficult even for the best players. So that's the general movement tech of Lilac. So on our next video, when we come back, we're actually going to explore Dragon Valley. And this will be the very first level of the game. So definitely uh, tune in and let's see how that rolls. And we're going to utilize all these different strategies that I've explained here. We're going to see all different kinds of it. And that's the beauty of Dragon Valley. But of course, I'll explain more on that video. So thank you uh, for watching this first tutorial. T tutorial. Tutorial. And uh, hey, be prepared for learning your very first level of Freedom Planet.